everyone, it's Ashwin Rao. I hope you're all doing well today. Today's video feature brings you another video in my series of the world's best boot makers. So if you take a look at these models and you're familiar with the heritage boot making scene that has emerged and has a burgeoning culture worldwide, you might recognize some of these styles and pairs. But if you're not familiar, you should get familiar with Underhood Handmade. So my journey with Underhood Handmade began in 2020 when I started getting to be a lot more interested in high quality heritage style workwear and certainly boots, along with my previous existing interest in high quality men's dress shoes. And I was looking for makers that elevated the quality of making in boots, which has traditionally lagged behind the quality of bespoke and MTO shoes at the high level for shoemaking. And yet I was seeing similarly priced boots available, but with much less effort put into build quality. So I went searching and found the really vibrant boot making scene in Bandung, Indonesia. And one of the leaders of that scene was Rizki Afnan, who, as I mentioned, delivers us Underhood Handmade with a small group of apprentices that he occasionally employs, making very, very high quality boots. And so my very first model was this pair, which you'll see some photos interspersed with as I go along, along with these other two shoes, as well as one other pair that I've owned and have subsequently parted with. This is the LVL01, essentially five eyelet derby built on a Veltuin 270 degree construction with a local Indonesian red brown rough out leather, almost a coral colored but leaning towards tan um, on a Dr. Sol rock hard half sole. My next pair was on the other side here, acquired about a year later, featuring a really beautiful uh, Horween unglazed natural shell cordovan and a Dr. Sol 1220 full sole, also with that beautiful Veltuin construction that is really one of the features that's come to define Rizki and Underhood's production. And then in more recent times, just in the past few weeks, I acquired this beautiful uh, lace to toe model, his LCV02 model, built with a commando sole and a dark brown edge dressing to provide me with more of an urban commando style lace to toe boot. So that is a lineup of shoes that I've had along with the LCV02, which I'll put up pictures of here, which is a variation on the monkey boot and lace to toe model that has become so popular in the boot making community and the boot enthusiast community. So I wanted to take you through some of the reasons why I believe that Underhood is amongst the very best boot makers in the world. We'll start with this pair that I acquired that is now nearly two years old. You can see this beautiful makeup in a very rugged, robust, um, kind of rough textured nap uh, reverse or rough out leather. So a rough out leather has the flesh side facing inward and the more rugged suede like finish, but a little bit more robust, a little bit more um, irregular, a little bit less refined look. But if you pull in, you can really see the quality of the stitch work done and the beautiful craftsmanship and pattern that Underhood offers. You can see this beautiful swoopty style side paneling and heel counter. If I pull in further, you can see how clean, despite the rough out, the stitch work is done on this contrast stitching on the upper. You can see this three to two to one stitch um, pattern, which I really like, and just the proportions, as well as the fairly round toed yet geometrically distinct last that sets it apart from other shoes. But what Underhood has become most known for is this beautiful stitching work that Underhood and Rizki do on the outsole stitch, in this case, the 270 degree Veltuin construction, which you can see through this imagery right here. Beautiful work done where the paneling and the stitching are done with almost a diagonal profile that you can see here where the stitches are almost twined and then spun with a slight diagonal angle, which has become a revered aspect of Underhood's 
designs and shoe makes. Kind of weird to define a shoe by its outsole stitching, but there you have it. We're really looking for minutia of details, quality and craftsmanship, how systemically consistent the stitch work is done on the uppers and at what quality, what compromises are made and whatnot. So really a beautiful pair. That was my very first pair and I chose a local rough out leather to save on cost. And this initial pair took about five to six months to produce um, back in 2020 when Underhood was coming onto the scene, was already established, but really growing internationally. Now it takes upwards of eight months Although Rizki now has a group of apprentices who have allowed some of the production um, to speed up. And therefore I actually acquired this boot uh, much more recently in about three to four months time. But before I get to this boot, I wanted to talk about Rizki's now famous service boot pattern. As I mentioned, this is a really cool leather. I acquired this boot on the used market from somebody who clearly has really excellent taste in um, boot makeups and you can see this uh, brown edge dressing kind of a variation on the natural edge dressing but one that's meant to nat match this um, horween unglazed natural shell cordovan which is really a leather designed to acquire a dramatic patina over time um, horween shell cordovan is generally quite easy to care for sometimes just requires a bit of brushing sometimes a wipe down with a damp cloth and the very rare to occasional conditioning job but again what you can see here is this slight pitch to the collar of the shoe um, from the shaft you can see this beautiful work done on the heel counter and again this incredible precision of the stitch work done right there that slight diagonal placement of the stitches you see throughout you can see how nary a stitch here is out of place. And that includes pretty much all aspects of the upper. Again, you see this beautiful patterning. Similarly, you see the more traditional two to one, two rows of stitching to one row of stitching. But if again, if I pull in, you see how clean and consistent this work really is. This shoe is really meant to be a lifetime shoe for a boot enthusiast who enjoys patina. My final pair was the MTO that I was able to reach out to um, Rizki to create, which is this Lace to Toe LCV2 model, which you can see here in profile. And above, this is a boot that has essentially eight eyelets paired as seven eyelets, two speed hooks, and then the final terminal eyelet right here. Again, you can see this beautiful stitch work done on the construction here. This is slightly different in its pattern compared to my other pairs. A little less of that diagonal look, but again, that clean, consistent, uh, subtle work done on the stitching to give it a certain level of consistency. If you pull in right here, you can see all of the joints in the stitching of the upper and how clean that work really is done. You can see that I chose antique brass eyelets, a slight contrast stitch to highlight the cleanliness of the work here done. One of the design elements that I don't often talk about, but I really enjoy in this particular pair is the design of this back heel counter, which has this kind of uh, hourglass shape on the back. Again, that double row of stitching, and then this row that comes across that area and terminates along the edges of the shoe here. I use a contrast stitching to again, highlight that Veltuin 270 degree construction. And in this case, a Vibram Commando sole, which you can see here. Um, last features I wanted to talk about were the last of these shoes. This is another feature that Rizgi has become very well known for and regarded for. This is his Vulture Last, which has a rounded but slightly asymmetric look to it which i really really like it fits me incredibly well this is a more traditional round toad but with and then the service boot style which has a similar last to my um, other pair from right here um, sizing wise underhood's sizing can be fairly um, challenging for some but for me my brannock 10d fits his size 43 quite well i can step up to a 44 occasionally and get away with it. I wanted to mention one last challenge to working with Underhood. Almost all of his pairs are released via the lottery system on Instagram. So you have to have an Instagram account. 
You have to be willing to try, try again, fail numerous times, and ultimately try to figure out a way to get on his list. He can be challenging to um, get a hold of on Instagram via direct messaging, but once he does, he's a really gracious man. I think he's just super busy, and it's hard to take as many orders as he receives and deliver on all of those orders. And he's very mindful of keeping the quality of his work done at a high level while meeting production standards. So depending on what's going on in the life of Underhood, you might have more challenges or less challenges um, acquiring a pair. You can always look on the used market as I did for this pair right here, or uh, work with him over time to develop MTO models for your own suiting. I feel lucky to have had two MTO boots and then finding a beautiful pair um, available via the used market. So please like, subscribe, and comment if you wish. I hope you're enjoying this series of the world's best bootmakers. Underhood Handmade definitely belongs at the very top echelon and top tier of bootmakers producing high quality heritage style boots in the world today. Have a good day. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.